Welcome back to the GHT Overland Podcast, where we visit with overland travelers around the globe, sharing their stories and their experiences with you. This is part two of our interview with Jack and Gemma, all the way from South Australia. Let's pick up where we asked Jack and Gemma about their biggest challenge overlanding through Australia. Um, yeah, look. As we said before, passing on those extremely narrow roads in the high country was was both exciting and scary. <laughs> um, but I would say probably our biggest it's 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 not yet been too much of a challenge. But traveling with the dog has is definitely limited us. Um, obviously, in Australia here, dogs are not allowed in national parks, so we haven't yet uh, had the opportunity. But we. Uh, plan on Gemma's got a uh, family in uh, uh, Sydney I've got family in Brisbane which are the two next states that we're going to be entering so our plan is to be able to leave the dog at family and friends for a couple of days and then we will be able to travel national parks um, like I said it hasn't been too much of an issue yet but we know that the further we get to the north of Australia that's going to become more and more um, also in South Australia where we live there is no ticks I'm not sure if you guys have um, ticks over there but we're just entering tick country now so I've been freaking out a little bit about it <laughs> um, I've given I've given him a double dose of the tick medicine <laughs> <laughs> so he's he's definitely covered and we've done all we can but like I say it's it's unknown to us in South Australia so it's it's a bit of a new I'm not looking forward to coming across them. <laughs> yeah, so check Ace every every night, or if he's in the in the bush or something, when he comes back, check him out. Yeah, I've been checking him. Yeah, religiously. Yeah. Jack does all the worrying, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Sounds like me. I'm the worrier of the group as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought Jack was a lot. Yeah, usually a lot more calm and easygoing, but yeah, he just tends to worry a little bit more about Ace in the car. So. It makes me relax a little bit more. I know I'm in good hands. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Tell us about your process for planning the trip. Any particular software or processes you went through to minimize the need to reroute or turn around as you went along your trip? Uh, yes, yeah, so as Jack mentioned before, we have um, this good app called WikiCamps. Um, so we can get the signal. Um, it's off, sat off satellite. So even if we don't have phone signal on our phones we can still so yeah, navigate where we are exactly and where the next campsite or town is so it's super helpful um, highly recommend if anyone's going to travel Australia they definitely need to look up on that one it's a free app as well I believe yeah um, so yeah we just plan day by day really kind of off that um, when before we left we just sort of got recommendations from family and friends um, where they've been before and where they think we should check out um, yeah as must see destinations and spots I guess yeah we've we've been trying not to plan too far ahead because plans don't usually go to plan <laughs> <laughs> so we've been more just waking up on a day that we're gonna travel and we pulled a wiki camps app out um have a look at uh it has the ability of being able to filter down to fr free camps that allow dogs so we've been filtering it down to that and pretty much going from there um, like like Gemma said, only planning one or two days ahead at this stage. Just we know what direction we're going, but, yeah, we don't know where we're staying. <laughs> I, I like it like that. It's, it keeps it exciting. Yeah, that's good. Any specific safety planning you did before your trip? Um, uh, I did pretty much everything I could uh, mechanically-wise on the car. When it hit 150,000 Ks, we... Uh, I did, yeah, wheel bearings, brakes, suspension, um, timing belt, all oils, diff oils, all kind, of, uh, all filters and everything. So the car is in as good possible shape as it can be. And um, I uh, serviced the car myself, so that's definitely saving us a lot of money. We've we've already done a uh, on the road service. 
Um, it was a bit unexpected. Uh, it it come around a bit sooner than we thought. So we were driving around in the town. I was um I purchased the oil that we need. I had everything else on board. Um, all we didn't have was a place to do the service. So we pretty much drove around till I seen a big shed. Pulled into the driveway. I asked the man if I could do a service in his driveway, and he was more than happy to let us use the space, which was great. Um, he even had an old oil drum that I was able to dump all the oil in and a high-pressure degreaser gun to clean up afterwards. So that couldn't oh, have gone wow. much better, really. Yeah, I think it was pretty much nearly a 39-degree 30, day. It was stinking hot. It was boring, and this, yeah. this this man was like an angel. <laughs> yeah, we, nice. pulled into the, we pulled into the right driveway, that's for sure. I said to Gemma, we just got to ask. Someone's going to say yes. Um, yep. you just gotta, You just got to ask the question. We've been really lucky with the people we've come across so far. We've had no issues with uh, people or anything. But um, That's great. That really makes traveling pretty uh, enjoyable. Yeah, absolutely. And um, safety-wise, uh, Ace sleeps on the front passenger seat of the car, and he growls and alerts us if anyone comes near the car while we're sleeping. So that's definitely, it's, it gives us a bit of comfort having him there, just knowing there that. Go. It's nice knowing that, um, yeah, someone's around <laughs> if they are. <laughs> so Ace is definitely he's he definitely doubles as our security guard <laughs> if he's not licking them to death. <laughs> so I'm going to take that this travel that you're doing is probably giving you a break from working. But is that something that you guys are looking at and working on the road during your travels? Uh, yeah. So we both worked full time last year to sort of save up and. Yeah, by the end of it, when the year finished, we were both definitely ready for a holiday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have uh, we have jobs to go back to. I, I, I think working along the road would only add to the experience. You know, we've, we're both completely open-minded to possibly picking up some farm work along the way. But I would, I would think I'd like to probably do six months or so with it, <laughs> without working at least. <laughs> Considering um, we never had a gap year out of school or anything, we uh, I um, finished school on the Friday, started work on the Monday, and haven't really had a big holiday since. So I would at least like to do six months of no work, <laughs> with with the option of picking up work if the opportunities arise. That's good. Tell us about navigation communication. How do you make sure you know where you're at and that you're not getting lost? Any like paper maps you use or apps that you figured out on a uh, smartphone or device? Um, yep, so we have just a map that has all of Australia in it down to the little dirt roads. So that is our last uh, line of last resort sort of thing. Um, and is that a paper map? Yeah, it's a paper map. It's a Old book. School. Okay. <laughs> yeah, can't go wrong with them. Um, but as we said before, the, the Wikicams app works off satellite, so... Even if we have no phone signal, we, it'll still tell you exactly where you are on the road, and um, that that you know that's very comforting. Knowing that if even if we have no signal, we're not going to get completely lost. We can get to a T junction and know where we are. Um, we we run our phones through Telstra. Um, that's definitely the best provider here in Australia for signal wise. Um, Gemma, uh, when her contract ran out. Uh, didn't renew it so we now just share the one phone um we haven't had too many issues with signal or anything yet but uh yeah like we say the wiki camps would be our number one go-to okay and do you have a backup plan communication wise if something goes wrong is it just a cell phone or anything else that you plan to use if you i don't know get stuck somewhere where there's no cell service um we don't uh, we we um and art about getting a satellite phone for quite a while. Um, it's something we definitely haven't needed yet. I'm still open to the idea of getting it when we travel a bit more remotely. Um, we it's not we haven't been going too far between big towns or too far into the bush in this first leg of our trip. So a satellite phone hasn't been necessary yet. Um, like I said, Telstra is quite good we we've had obviously a few spots where we haven't been able to get reception but with the with the map still tracking where we are we felt pretty comfortable that we can get ourselves out of most places 
Okay, very good. So it sounds like cell phone is your primary um, means of communication. You don't use uh, yeah. either a ham radio or a CB or anything? Oh, yeah, we have a UHF radio. Um, there, It's not mega long range. I would say we could probably get a 50, within 50 Ks of someone. So the main channel over here is channel 40, which all the truck drivers run off. So if we're uh, if we're going out on a dirt road, dirt track, we we leave our UHF radio on. That's just definitely a bit of a backup. We can uh, contact someone. There's there's always likely to be someone on the end of that line. Okay, very good. What is your? Um, you talked a little bit about your pre-trip planning process to make sure the vehicle was um, good to go, and you were confident in that. Anything else you want to add to that that you did that our listeners should make sure as well before they go on a trip that the vehicle they're using is as good as it's going to get? Yeah, so like I said, I um I have a friend in South Australia who's a mechanic. He um I spent a lot of time pre trip at his house running over the car. He taught me pretty much everything we could learn to do uh on the side of the road maintenance wise. Like I said, we've already done a service, which um, without his knowledge would have been a fair bit harder. But um, we carry a lot of spares. I have spare wheel bearings, spare uh, hoses, belt, uh, fan belts, uh, hose clamps. We've got oil. We've got uh, two spare tyres, which I think is an essential. And um, our last line of resort there would be uh, linked with our insurance is a... Um, possibility to get towed out of near anywhere in South Australia. Um, oh, Australia. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, Australia. Um, I've signed up with a company called Club 4x4 and they pretty much ensure they can get you out of anywhere. So that's our last line of defence. Okay, and do you go through the vehicle like each day or any preventative maintenance that you're going through to check the vehicle on a regular basis? Yeah, I'm under the car every day. <laughs> Just just checking, having a look, making sure nothing's come loose. I pop the bonnet, give everything a bit of a wiggle, make sure no, there's no oil anywhere, nothing's leaking. And, um, yeah, that's just something I do pretty much every day before we get in the car and drive. I like just a bit of peace of mind. I like to get under, have a look, make sure everything's as it should be. We haven't come across any issues yet, but I, I like to think that when we do, we're, we're pretty prepared. Okay, really good. So let's go through real quick some onboard necessity things. How much fuel do you carry and how far does that take you? Um, the troop carrier has come standard with two 90-litre diesel tanks. So we have up to 180 at, at most. Um, we can do just over a 1,000 Ks comfortably. I don't like to run the tanks too low because um, in remote areas in Australia, you can pick up a bit of bad fuel. So... I like to keep it at just under quarter of a tank. I don't like to let it go much lower than that. Um, this troop carrier has two fuel filters, so I've been checking them every week or so just to make sure we haven't picked up any dirty fuel or anything. But, um, yeah, there's only going to be a couple of stints in Australia where we are going to need to probably carry a jerry can on top of our 180 litres, and that would just be to get you to the next... Uh, big town. Okay. And how are you managing water use? Any purification methods you use? And how much water do you carry? Um, so on board, we carry about 80 litres. We've got a 40 litre tank, which is under the car. And then we've also got two smaller 20 litre jerry cans um, that Jack likes to sort of put around the car to balance the weight. Um, so we're not sort of fixed where those two are. Uh, so we try to fill them at the every big town we've noticed they have filtered water stations which are for free to use they obviously just sort of uh for designed to fill up water bottles so it's quite slow pouring but it's definitely worth it to be able to get the filtered water and we just yeah fill up um when we can at those bigger towns yeah we also manage our water use just by like I said, we've been staying on either a river or a lake every night, so all of our dishwashing and all the uh, hand clothes washing that we've been doing has all been just out of the river, really just trying to save our 80 litres for drinking water because we, we do drink quite a lot between us. Okay, good. Do you guys use solar or a generator for any electrical needs, like for your laptop or such? Uh, yeah, we, we have a 160-watt solar panel that 
we have be, we get out every day that we're not driving. Um, that's running into our dual batteries, which is running our fridge. So our fridge is running 24-7. Um, that's run through a Red Arc system, which uh, I've linked a switch, gives us the ability to be able to link both the crank battery and the secondary battery. So when the soul is charging, it's, it, it, we can charge both both batteries at the same time as well as when you're driving the alternator charges both batteries so we've been pretty lucky uh, with the sun we haven't had too many rain or overcast days um the one day where i was worried that we were going to struggle uh we just simply got in the car and drove to the next campsite for a couple of hours and that got us through okay terrific anything that we've missed uh not a no nah, not a lot we we've been we've been filling our days uh quite easily surprisingly considering we're meant to be on a holiday it, it's almost felt like we've been busy <laughs> but um we've we've bought our push bikes along so we've been getting them off it at every opportunity we can there's quite a few mountain bike tracks around uh all the areas that we've been touring so we've been mountain bike riding a lot um i go for a run every morning while Gemma does yoga <laughs> just keeps us uh fit and healthy which we're very into at the moment that's good <laughs> and uh at night time we've just been chilling out reading some books and playing you know i don't know if you guys have you know in the states we do but, uh, it's a yeah it's, it's great that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting we're getting pretty good at it yeah we've been able to pull up um at campsites where there's a lot of other backpackers and we sort of bring out the you know cards and everyone knows how to play it so it's a great way to sort of get get everyone together and have a chat and sort of get to know each other yeah that's good i like that that's a really good tip any additional fun facts about you guys um with your downtime in the evening amongst your uno games uh, any (laughs) musical instruments or singing around that campfire with others uh, not, not as such, but Jack is pretty known to be able to make up a song about just about anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they can be, uh, pretty interesting songs. Yeah. I sort of, yeah, if he sees a lizard, there'll be a song about a lizard for about an hour, <laughs> <laughs> which is, yeah, quite funny. I don't know if anyone else has heard it around the campfire, but. <laughs> uh, I ha- we had a guitar at home that was not getting played enough. I did intend on bringing it. And we pretty much forgot to pack it. Yeah. <laughs> I only noticed when we were about an hour uh, out of town that we didn't bring the guitar. I'm not too phased. I don't think we would have used it a hell of a lot. Um, like I said, con- considering we're on holiday, we've we've been filling our days very easily. <laughs> we you sort of blink and it's dinner time. Yeah. Most days, and we've been uh yeah running, riding, stretching. <laughs> We're too busy doing nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good thing. Yeah, definitely. So what, is, what is your favorite drink in the morning to get you going? Um, well, I drink lots of tea and Jack drinks coffee at this stage. Yeah, pretty basic. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I've got really into the coffees as of late. <laughs> I used to only have one in the morning. Now I'm sort of having one when I get up, one at about 9 o'clock, and then possibly another around lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. Um, when we were living at home, we used to have like fresh smoothies every day, but we thought that was a bit too luxurious to take camping. So, yeah, we're just back to basics. Back to the basics. <laughs> and then to wind down at night, we drink dandelion tea, which Gemma's <laughs> recently got me onto. And, um, yeah, enjoying that. It's a great way to wind down after a day of doing not too much. <laughs> so what is your best advice to aspiring overlanders like us? Uh, I think you just got to have a plan. Like us, like me and Gemma did, we, we set a date. Um, we worked towards that date. It was great having a goal. It made saving a hell of a lot easier, just knowing that if we did save what we uh, planned on saving, that we would more than likely be rewarded by having the best year of our lives. <laughs> so I think just get a pen and paper out. Start writing a few things down, work out how long you want to go for, how much you think you're going to spend a week, and yeah, definitely just having a goal on paper made 
made the whole process a lot easier. Yeah, and Jack did lots of research well, um, before we left, and there was lots of people on our Facebook that review their trips, and they sort of post how much they spent over how long. Um, so it's really it gives um, yeah a good insight into their trip and how you want to plan yours. And obviously, if you stay at caravan parks and things like that, um, paying for accommodation is gonna. Uh, gonna add up in the end yeah we've been on the road for like we said just over a month and um between us we've spent 20 dollars on accommodation which is yeah nothing really we've free camped every night apart from one which i think is in the long run definitely going to help us to be able to stretch this trip out as long as possible (laughs) yeah and you guys nailed it because you did the planning and you set a date that you were going to leave and you did it yeah, yeah, definitely. The, I think we changed the date maybe once or twice, but we were like, no, <laughs> we have to go. Otherwise, the more money we spend in Adelaide, we could be spending in other parts of um, Australia. Yeah, we, we actually left a day early. Yeah, <laughs> we did. We were, we were ready. We'd done everything we needed to do. And um, it was the day before we were meant to leave. And I said, let's go. So we just <laughs> left. <laughs> Good. That's great. So how can people learn more about you and what you're doing? Um, look, we've, we've set up a uh, travel page on both our Facebook and Instagram. Um, we've been updating it nearly daily with uh, the free camps that we've been staying at. So anyone who's planning a trip can get onto either our Facebook or Instagram, um, see photos of the camp. Um, we've been doing a little review on them, which has been helpful for a lot of people. And... Uh, um, as Jack mentioned before, we uh, just started our Facebook page, which is um, called See Around, and that's C Y A, and then Round, and then Instagram is also where we post a lot of daily photos and what we've been up to as well, and that's See Around underscore Oz. Yeah, the See Around's all one word. It's a bit of Aussie slang. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah C Y A R O U N D, all one word. So we'd love for people to jump on there, have a look at what we're doing, and um, that should definitely help give people a bit of an insight okay terrific so hey guys thanks so much for your time we're absolutely humbled that you've given us such an amazing look into your world and experiences and what you've learned along your travels so safe travels and adventures to you we hope we can catch up with you again sometime soon yeah perfect thanks so much for your time and we'd love to come to the states one day so <laughs> yeah thanks for having us guys we are we're loving every day you are welcome anytime in the pacific northwest yeah, keep us in mind <laughs> sounds good yeah <laughs> oh, we will very good cheers cheers thanks thank you bye and that's a wrap Gemma and jack are such an amazing couple overlanding and loving each day after setting a plan and sticking to it their two episodes were packed with first-hand experience and tips from inspirational overlanders living their dreams down under in South Australia. Be sure to visit the show notes page on our website at ghtoverland.com. Click on Podcasts, then select the Jack and Gemma episode. All the details and helpful links mentioned throughout our interview with Jack and Gemma are there for you. Be sure to send your feedback with questions or suggestions to ghtoverlandpodcast at gmail.com. Be sure to check out GHT Overland Alexa skill as well. On your Alexa app, just go to skills and search for GHT Overland and subscribe. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you'd like to see or hear anything different than what we're currently doing. And did you also know that you can say, Alexa, play the GHT Overland podcast, and she'll play the podcast. Now, before you race off, it would mean the world to us, and I mean the entire globe, if you share the podcast, subscribe, rate, and review. Give GHT Overland some love, so we can reach as many Overlanders as possible passing on priceless experience, knowledge, and stories of overlanders doing good in the world. Next Thursday, we chat with Bernd from Germany. He and his wife, Claudia, started their overland adventure in Germany, moving down into India, 
going through several countries like Iran and Pakistan in their Land Rover Defender. It's an amazing and eye-opening interview. Remember to give us some podcast love by sharing the GHT Overland podcast with your friends. Bye.